Say yes to new beginnings. Yes. Say yes to new standards of excellence. Yes. Say yes to engage in reportage with a difference. Yes. Introducing Yes International Magazine. The time to say yes to your dreams and aspirations is here. to another edition of our Instagram live uh, session. My name, like I always say, has not changed. My name remains Azu Arinze. And my guest this evening is Mr. Yibo Koko. YB, for short, is the Director General, Chief Executive Office of River State uh, Tourism Development Agency, a theater arts graduate of the University of Port Harcourt, and later New York Film Academy in Los Angeles, United States of America. He used to dazzle all of us as a top-rate uh, comedian until he had a career detour. Friends, fans, followers, um, you're going to join me. <laughs> As I welcome my friend, my brother, Mr. Yibo Koko. Please remember to subscribe to our YouTube uh, channel. Our YouTube channel is uh, the Yes NG TV. T H E Y E S N G TV. All right. Now, as a theater practitioner, where do you think you draw your strength from? Uh, well, not to answer a jam question, but I think, or rather I know that probably the age now or understanding that the African experience is a good and great experience. So my inspiration comes from my backyard, you know, from, from when I use backyard, you know what I mean, from my backyard. Uh -huh, so, yes. All right. Now, how, did, how exactly, you know, did you start out in this business? Uh, well, um, first of all, um, as a men sometimes are masters of their own faith, if we have to check Shakespeare and those we write. I've always wanted to study theater, you know, even if we didn't know that um, if you need a pay like that, or you need a pay, you know, <laughs> Somebody said, tell us what you mean. What I mean is my backyard is my backyard. I, I get inspired by my surrounding where I live and my backyard is my community, actually. That's what I mean, because from my community and the things that I find in my, in my community, it, it, it cascades into my creative you know, essence. So when I was in school or growing up in the, in the villages, you know, nobody like now, where everybody did township. When, I, when we were in the village, you know, we used to dance what they call enamorarikama, which is more like um, mini masquerades for our age grade. So if you're like six to, before you become, I think six to 12, you know, we'd always go compound to compound, you know, to dance and they give you small money, you know, a lot of it's just for the fun of it. So I always look forward to doing that during Christmas and Easter. And then going to my secondary school, and I was very keen into literature so i read a lot you know i used to read a lot i still do even if now zoo we get a library for him back and um i saw olaro timis the gods are not to blame in 1982 when i was in in, in the secondary school and it was directed by olaro timi himself with lee peter foiza as uh odewale from then i just loved and then portacot you know 
was just a hub, you know, for, for creativity and all of those things. Then Columbus, Iriswanga, all of those people, we used to go to the Arts Council to watch. And I loved live theater. And for that reason, when I now discovered that, then they study them for school, you know. So I said, oh, wow. Then the prerequisites for you to study theater was almost the same thing, to study law. And I chose theater as opposed to law when everybody wanted me to do since I wasn't a science student. So, yes, I, I studied theater because I love theater, because I saw a live show in 1982, and that got it all into me for me to do what I am still doing today. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Now, Iwokoko rose to national prominence as a comedian. Why did you turn your back on comedy? <laughs> Uh, so, you know, for okay, let me go back again into how then I used to define comedy, or I still do define comedy as a castigation of redundant morality. You know, for me, comedy was a tool, you know, for me to express myself from a point where, you know, I needed for people to see, to get to know what was wrong in society or our backyard without seemingly offending the next person because once they say laughter freely given begets yet another laughter so when they laugh at the incongruous and then you not discover say which they laugh at is also a problem in society you know you think about it i get away with it i remember when i was doing the, the breast milk you know that joke about the breast milk yeah and i remember then abacha was in power and then the trick with the breast milk is that when it gets to the the president or the head of state in power i don't say anything you know i just i just keep quiet <laughs> so i remember they called me during one of the polo tournaments in ikoi and it was the director of military intelligence that got me so while i was there i didn't want to tell that joke about breastfeeding because i knew it was going to get me in trouble and they warned me if you don't do that joke, if you don't do that joke about that breast milk, I'm like, <laughs> see, this is what a lot of people got through. So, at a point, you know, um, I've always wanted to do something. Like comedy was there for me, always is. And I still love to do comedy, but just that, you know, you know, they challenge me again. And I thank God for those who you know, have done so very well, you know, in the contemporary era still. I mean, they have shown that there's so much wealth to grow from the creative space, especially the comedy as well. But I also, also wanted to study film, you know. I wanted to explore that. So sometime in 2005 or thereabout, I went to London to do a show at Moat Hill. And then <clears throat> we, you know, flex. They keep us for Hilton Paddington that day. And that period, so I was in London for two weeks and I was flexing, you know, come here, they can me go, stay for Hilton. It was amazing. But while we were there in front of the hotel, we saw a bus, those London buses, right? It says, study film. It just, it writes, study film. So it was New York Film Academy. They were in um, King's College, I remember them. As an Iran, I couldn't write the address. I forgot it was a Sunday. And immediately I called, it was voicemail. And I should call back the next day. So I called the next day. And when I called the next day, I spoke to somebody. And then they directed me to the website. Then, then with our Yahoo, we they use, uh, not Yahoo as Yahoo, Yahoo. But Yahoo as email then, you know. So Gmail was not popular in 2005. So, but then we did a check our phones regularly. Funnily for me, I spoke to them, checked their website and everything. And I didn't know that six months after, they don't take me to go school then. And when I found out, I had missed the session, you know, by a couple of weeks. So I had to wait for the next session. And I raised enough money and paid a um, refundable $1,000 then to J.P. Morgan, Nabina. Yes, J.P. Morgan and Nabina Morgan Chase. I don't forget, but then in New York. And that's how I went back. When I, when I went to the school, it was now at St. Catherine's in Oxford. And it was amazing that I was going to Oxford University, you know, with all of those, um, you know, now, so I go Oxford from theater now. I don't need to go Oxford University. So it was fun. I was there for a year. Then I got a scholarship. So I did one year filmmaking, directing, and all of those stuff. Then I was now, me, um, Nagashwin, he is now big in Bollywood. He's very big director, Nagashwin. 
And then one guy they called Ben. Because of how we've been in Nepal, I don't know, but somehow we got scholarships to either go to New York or LA to do masters. You know, because I didn't want to do masters. Me so I went back to LA and studied another set of hands-on and filmmaking. I was there for another two years and then got um, an internship or just to work at the Universal Studios for a while. And I did a condi. So between 2006 to almost 2010, 11, I did come to go. I was in LA and my family was in, 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 in London. So that's why I now got into, you know, filmmaking, production, you know, understanding the beauty of the art, you know, from the most spectacular man as well. And don't forget that that became a George on the Island show. So all of those things now come push me. But the primary concern was it was through the theater that I was getting all that I was getting. So I didn't leave theater. I only just, I didn't leave comedy, sorry. I only just explored other avenues of the creative industry. Um, now, was that a, a difficult decision to make, you know, considering the fact that uh, you had become so big as a comedian there? Nah, they say, they say whatever that is vividly imagined, ardently desired, sincerely believed, must inevitably come to pass. I wasn't living comedy. I was only just expanding what I was doing. That's it. So I know, I don't feel anyhow. And even more so, I was doing stand-up comedy even more in London to get small money to pay for the film school. So I even, I remember me and Mike Okri in, um, in LA, me and Mike. So Mike, Mike was in, in LA then, you know. So Crenshaw, Mike was in Crenshaw. Uh, Mike was in Crenshaw. And I was living on uh, La Cienega Boulevard. Um, and now they are where we meet. They carry me go some. So I was making a, a cool... Uh, dollars and pounds doing stand-up comedy both ways. Still using it to pay for film anyway. So it was cool. In the Nigerian scene, yes, I wasn't doing jokes anymore, but out there, I was using it to survive. Okay. Now, do you have any regrets, you know, leaving a comedy or quitting comedy? Which guy regret? No, no I got regret. No. It was... <laughs> I, I mean... Yeah, I'm not, I'm not like popular, you know, in the contemporary Nigerian scene, only for our age mate them. When they say, when jungle mature that time, I mean, let's call it speed is speed. I, I, I know, make a talk about me, I know I was very good, you know, that time. Maybe I don't slack plenty now, you know, but then I remember when Nigeria won the Olympics, I was the most sought out stand-up comedian. In fact, I was the one that did all the shows when Nigeria won Olympics in 96. When Fela died, his post humorous um, bed did the first ever show after Fela died. And now me, we then call um, Alliance Francaise and the family, they called me to do the show. So then, I mean, they were all there. My colleagues were there, but you know now. So, <laughs> we need a talk because we know what they do. My man, don't slack. So, young, the young shall grow. The younger ones have become so very good and so very popular that you can't even risk, you know, joining issues with them. The only advantage we have is that within our age grade still, you can still get away with a lot of things and I can still tell jokes. And then my 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 research purpose is then, you know, not be now where everybody gets, you know, things to do on the internet, you know. But then my inspirations and my knowledge to do comedy from the point of view was um, coming from Olatunji Dare, Ruben Abati. These are my two favorite writers then. When, you know, when guys, they write, nobody now way things so about Olatunji Dare, Ruben Abati. You know, I'm not saying anything about Ruben anyway. The man is a prolific writer. Uh, uh, Latunji was a prolific writer. And or they still are prolific writers. If you go to Guardian, you know, conscience, what's that? It's a conscience and open wound. Only truth can heal it. And that's Usman and Fodio. And then yeah. once you read the Guardian editorial for one day, you know already what is happening in Nigeria. So from that area, I will coin all of my jokes based on what Olatunji will write, what um, um, Ruben will write, 
and I push all of this. Then if you go to um, Chicks and Company for Vanguard, yeah, yeah, then my favorite. Oh, is it OBS? OBS for Guardian. You know, those guys were like. So when I gather all those information, then I now begin to now. That's why my jokes then were a little bit, you know, either too scholarly or too. We it wasn't just about the jokes. I had to punch it. So, and I know that everybody then when we they tell jokes, you know, there's a way you look at it. They 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 think that the comedian must be a clown. You know. Yes. Now I need you to tell us about your new job as the DG of a reverse uh, tourism uh, development uh, agency. Okay, thank as uh, May I talk like who they do this? Thank you, Azua Rinze. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, but, you know, <laughs> prior to my appointment, you know, I just did for house, really. I got um, a text message. Oh, but they, don't announce, they announce you as DG for River State, and I... I read the, the um, government uh, press uh, release on my this thing. You know, we had done Seki. So Seki was almost getting ready to do an American tour. And we had done that performance uh, at uh, Culture in collaboration with the US consulate. And we are just getting ready. And then Dubai Tourism was also doing their Expo 2020 for last year. So we don't already want tour with our theater performance of the Seki dance only for me to get this job. So when we got this job, we, I, uh, of course, I take the job because for me, if Seki is a drop of water in an ocean, the job literally was the ocean itself because we have a lot of young people. Um, understanding the creative economy is something that we do not. And the average person who is, in, who is a leader in this country feels that, you know, the entertainment space is just a jollofing space, you know, so most guys are just to take groove, you know, so monetizing that is something that is lost, and that's why I applaud uh, Bola Leo St. Peter's for, for what she's doing with the theater, even when you say you have the National Theater, or when you have all the arts councils in the Federation together, but again, monetizing our assets is a bit lost, because we have not come to understanding what the asset is to monetize it. So this job is an opportunity to drive that conversation. And it's also difficult, like I said, because when you get government where we know we like to blame ourselves, blame government and ourselves. And if you read Oye Lawal, Oye Lawal will say, who is government? Government now, me and you. And Government, they do things because we didn't check and balance them. Only NSAS try to change that direction. What we did for school when we did do riots and we did call none. Student Union was very strong then. We can vibrantly, you know, engage government, you know, to change policies and profile solutions to policies anyway. So my job and my team is to rejig the river tourism economy, you know, do a revenue-based financing, which of course we have actually put together to a hundred billion naira. And you see what Lagos State is doing, you know, knowing that Lagos is cosmopolitan. Okay, so um, the job at the agency, first of all, we have what we call um, growing the conversation, because one of the things that is lacking in our system is understanding our art enough to monetize it. So. The job of the agency is not just going straight to infrastructure in terms of brick and mortar, but to be deliberate with creating awareness. We have 23 LGAs in River State. We have um, 26 ethnic groups, right? So from our food, the assets in your community, yeah, then you yeah, can exactly. monetize those assets, right? And tourism is not just say, I want to go to Las Vegas. I want to go to uh, Walt Disney. You know, because then you see that almost every travel agent or agency in Nigeria is more of outbound to take you outside Nigeria. And inbound, our story is an unsafe story, insecurity. We amplify that anyway. So even when I'm from River States, you, you're from Imo, okay. Where are you from, Imo, Abi? I'm from Anambra. Anambra, okay. Well, you guys are a bit safe right now. But then you now notice that the narrative you get from Borono, from Plateau, from Zamfara, 
from Kaduna epitomizes what is insecurity in Nigeria. But the guy who is in Cross River, in uh, Bayasa, in uh, River State, they've not even been to the north anyway. I mean, so they don't even know what's going to happen. But the conversation of insecurity that is Nigerian, you know, is what everybody who is outside Nigeria assumes erroneously, that if you are in the south south, what is happening in Kaduna affects you. So I'm not saying that we should not tackle what is happening in Kaduna anyway. So I'm saying that the world today is cell phone. The world is mobile. The, more, the world is soft. So what are we doing to create a digital track record of what we have that nobody's coming in to see in your community because of how unsafe it is? So what are we doing? The agency is trying to let people know that beyond the COVID, right, we can aggregate our local content as tourism assets to put it across there for people to just keep the language, the conversation going. Let us understand that. Let us secure it. Let us hold it. Because once the people get a buy-in into what you're doing, and they know that they can grow wealth from that part of it, then it's going to be easy. So the agency in phase one, with our low-hanging fruits, we are getting the people to understand what domestic tourism is, what the assets are in your communities, and how to monetize those assets. So that's why we have a low-hanging fruit, or a couple of low-hanging fruits that we have put out. So first of all, we have a photographic competition. We're saying that wherever you are in your community, we want photographers take photographs, give us a brief uh, narrative of those photos. About 10 of them submit to the agencies. Competitive, we're giving out more. I mean, we will incentivize them. But we also have cameras from Canon coming to teach, you know, but also giving out cameras and also teaching what you would have to learn going forward with the contemporary use of uh, the, the cameras. So those images you send to us, if you send 10 and we shortlist 23 photographers, that means we have already 20, 230 images. Don't forget that the other images that we come in, we will not shot. So we have over 1,000 images. So those become content for us to drive a message for what is in those communities that you're not aware. Because Riverside is not just Port Harcourt anyway. Uh, it's environment. But there are 22 other local government areas. The same thing, we're doing videography competition. So go do five minutes videography of your place bring to us and we use that to go so there, there's a whole lot of things the idea is that we aggregate this information and deliberately put out something out there because like seki you know is such a spectacular dance and seki is just a drop like i said and seki is all around river state and nobody knows the things that are there because everything that you do for us as felago say now color mentality you know so what we're doing is domestic, getting the people to get a buy-in first of all. So it's not just going to build um, resorts, you know, blah, 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 blah. First of all, people don't forget, say, River State used to be a hub, you know, when it, when it came or when it comes to the creative space. So we have to build that again, get the people to do a buy-in. That me, I know they for PDP of APC, so it's a problem too. Because yeah, I, I was going to I was going to ask that whether you are interested there in politics. For what? I'm not interested in that. <laughs> See, if I, as you do, like my job, I, I'm, I'm by God's grace, I'm doing well with what I'm doing anyway. So, but we're serving. We all need to serve. But if there are conflicts of interest in serving, and they will not discover that everything is politics, everything has to do me. I, I, they know me for that. I go waka come out. I, or no matter whose ox is God. My first obligation in life is to myself and none other. So if I become obligatory to the next person, then I have to oblige that person completely. So now I've given an appointment by the governor. So I thank him. And I'm going to do all that I have to do to grow capacity for the people and also make whatever he has or the things that he has to grow the, the tourism space as part of his agenda. We have to work with that. If it becomes conflicting, then we know what to do. Interesting.